Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello. How are you? This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. The phones are open. Give us a call, 559-656-0317. Send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. If you do need help immediately, you can also dial pound 250 on your cell phone. Use the keyword insurance. Get you connected with an agent right away. We are going to be going over call-in and voicemail and emailed questions today, as we were doing not too long ago. There are so many of them. I want to try and get through as many as I can, so I'm going to jump right in. But remember, if you do have a question and you want to have me talk about it, anything insurance-related, these are some extremely challenging times, so don't hesitate to reach out. I am here to try and help. Diving in to the questions, I'm just going to read them to you as they appear in email. First one we're going to go over, it says, has USAA been dropping insurance in California? That is a great question. And while I don't have the specifics about USAA, I can tell you that I don't believe there is a carrier that is not either restricting the business that they are writing or non-renewing some level of policies or and or being very, very particular about conditions, meaning they're going to be looking at your home, they're going to be looking at potential exposures that are around your home. They're going to be, there's no sugarcoating it. They're they're taking a little bit of advantage of the fact that the market is extremely tight and they are doing some book cleaning. So it may be a risk that an insurance carrier might not have really wanted to have initially. Well, that's going to be one of the first ones they're going to be getting off of. But fortunately, as we've talked about again, we are at the end of this. We are at the tail end of this. We should be seeing the new regulations coming out literally any day. And we'll be, we should start to see some changes after that. Moving to the next question. Who is challenging the insurance fire maps to ensure that they make sense and pricing is rational based on them? It's a great question. Fire maps are, are, are a little bit misunderstood because there is no specific fire map per se that everyone from the Department of Insurance and each and every individual insurance company goes based on. One fire map could be created by one insurance company, another by another, another by the Department of Insurance. There's even another map that's being created specifically for the sustainable insurance strategy that talks about areas that are distressed, areas that are either not getting enough competition in the insurance industry, which I know is a joke because nobody is right now, but those are areas that have been identified as either being high for the exposure of fire or the ratio of premium to average income is off. Those distressed areas are going to be areas that insurance carriers must write more business in. And again, another map. So there is not any specific one map that I can actually point to and say, well, this is the map and this is the rationale based on that map because there is no one map for anything. Hopefully that'll help your question. Next question says, what is ordinance and law coverage regarding dwelling replacement cost value? Okay. Let's try and imagine in general insurance policies. And what an insurance policy does is it's supposed to rebuild, if we're talking about property insurance, your your house from what happened to pre-loss, right? Now, rebuilding your house that might have been built 40, 50 years ago or even longer might not have the building codes that are necessary for today's laws. Well, we just got through saying that the insurance policy is designed to put back what was there. Well, you can't put back what was there because what was there is no longer up to code. So ordinance or law coverage tends to be a coverage that you can purchase. It might actually be included as part of your coverage. If you take a look, you should find it. There's usually a dollar amount or a specific percentage that's listed. And that's going to cover that additional cost to go between what it would have cost to put the house back into the condition it was before and what condition it must be because of the new codes that exist. Does that make sense? So you're not just getting something new for old. You might actually be getting upgrades to certain things because you have to follow the code when you're rebuilding a home. Hopefully that answers your question. Next question says, how are FireWise communities created or implemented? We could do an entire show or two or 10 on FireWise communities and FireSafe communities. I would say the best thing for you to do is go online and research FireWise and you will get all of the specifics about 
what needs to be done for your home and your community in order to qualify as a FireWise or FireSafe community. Next question also about uh, FireWise. It says, how can you create a FireWise community if there is no one? I'm trying to read this. I'm not quite sure what they're asking. They're asking, how do you create a FireWise community if there is no one where you live? So you are basically your own community, I think is what they're saying. In, in that case, again, you would do the same thing. You would follow the guidelines to become a FireWise community. And if you're the only person in that community, well, you're probably going to have an easier time getting it done. You're not going to have to convince neighbors to do certain things or spend money to become a FireWise or FireSafe community. So that uh, it does not preclude you, as far as I know, from getting that designation. Next question, what is the status of the CFP discount application? I applied in December 2023, and my application is still under review. Okay, uh, CFP, of course, standing for California Fair Plan. California Fair Plan did get approval for discounts that, impl- that, will, uh, take up, that will take your premium down up to 14.5%, depending on certain things that you must do to your home. Now, it's a new discount. And as you can imagine, everybody with the California Fair Plan wants to apply and wants to do what they can to make their home less likely to burn. That's in the ideal world, but everyone's applying for the discount. Now, because it's a significant discount, 14.5%, the California Fair Plan is inspecting 100% of the homes that are applying for this discount. That is going to take some time. Having said that, if you sent your application in December, I'm going to say it's probably been long enough. You might want to think about contacting your agent or broker and see about either resubmitting it or getting a status on it. You might actually reach out to the California Fair Plan directly as well and say, hey, guys, been a while. It's been a minute. What is the status of this form that I sent in? Because remember, you have to send a specific form in that's signed that says you've done certain things. There's actually a checkbox list on the form that says what you've done to qualify for that discount. We're going to talk some more about the fair plan. It looks like while uh, I see other questions that have come in that talk about it, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll talk about those questions. We'll talk about the California fair plan. We'll talk about the discount that people are applying for to save that big 14 and a half percent off of an ever-growing California fair plan premium. This is insurance hour and I'm your host, Carl Sussman. We will be back in a flash. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And don't forget, click here to watch the next video.